Hey guys, Rodney from Suspension Geek here, and I want to talk to you guys about shocks. Well, basically adjustable shocks. I see lots of videos of guys telling you, hey, I adjusted my shocks and it works so much better. But they don't really tell you how they're adjusting them or what they're doing it and why. So we're going to talk about that. And we're not going to talk about it from a circle track because there's a lot of circle track stuff out there. There's hundreds of videos if you want to learn all the technical jargon that goes with it. But we're going to talk about some adjustable shocks and the basics of doing those adjustable shocks. We're going to start with the shock itself. So usually there's two types of shocks. You have a monotube shock and a twin tube shock and they're exactly as they say. Monotube is a single tube, twin tube is two tubes. So when these are operating, the fluid from a monotube actually passes through here. You usually have a knob up here and this is how you do your adjustment. On a twin tube, the fluid passes down through a passage down here. You have your knobs usually down here, one or two knobs. That's on your twin tube. A lot of guys used to like a monotube versus a twin tube because monotubes had better seals in this upper section. So you were able to turn the shock upside down or even sideways and it wouldn't leak. And there used to be a thing, here's your technical term, called hysteresis, which is basically a delay or... Um, a, a drag when the shock got all the way down to the bottom when it started to come back up. Well, the hysteresis between these two or the drag difference between the two used to be significant, but the newer shocks don't have the same issues as the old shocks. Not only that, but the new twin tubes, much like this one here, have new seals. In fact, they're using almost the same style seals as a monotube, so you can mount them upside down, you can mount them sideways, you can mount them normal way, any way you want. So that's your basics. Monotube, twin tube, not a whole lot of difference in there. There have been guys crying about that for years, but I'm going to tell you, at this point in 2020, there is zero, there's negligible difference between the two. Okay. Now we're going to go to a modern design and why I always talk about that. So, you got, here's your regular shock over the counter. You can buy it at any auto parts store, and you can see how fast it comes up and out. Yeah, it's kind of quick. And then you look at a new modern design. Oh, boy. And you can see how much slower that shock comes out. And the reason that shock's coming out like that is to control the springs. So we'll talk about the springs real fast. Because spring, doesn't matter what color it is, it could be silver, it could be orange, it can be blue, it can be big or small, but a spring has one objective. Only one thing it's supposed to do, right? That's it. It pops back up. Well, the heavier your spring, the higher it's going to pop. So you need to control that movement. And this is where you also hear the guys always talk about shock is a timing device. Um, actually, it's kind of a speed controller. So we'll take this adjustable shock. Here's what you're going to learn. You got a heavy spring on there. Well, this adjustable shock pops up really fast, just like the old style. But as you go heavier on your spring, you need to slow that down. A little knob up top, turn it to the plus side, positive. With the little knob, knob, clicker, whatever you guys want to call them, adjuster. You can literally just turn it, not breaking anything. It's got a seal inside, and what happens is, now it comes up much slower. That's controlling the speed, or the amount of time, it takes for that spring to expand. Same thing. You see how that works? Real slow. Here's the fun part. Why do you want to have all these adjustments? We're going to break out the toy car for this. Here's a toy car. Here's a toy cone. We'll get all the springs out. So, you got your new double adjustable shocks on. You're coming into the corner and you turn the corner and you hit the brakes and then what happens is the car pops up and it pushes. You've seen that, right? The car pushes, car tires are skipping, you have to slow way down. And why did it do that? It did that because all the weight popped back up. So remember, you turn your knob, give it more resistance. That keeps the weight down. So what happens is you can come into the corner now Turn the corner, the car stays down longer, turns the corner better, and then comes out of the corner, slowly coming up. The more, not, more you add to it, the more you can control that coming up. 
Second reason you want a double adjustable or a triple adjustable shock, more than a single, is when you accelerate. Road track guys, circle track guys don't really have to worry about this. Drag racers and autocrossers do. So when you go to accelerate, two things happen. Number one, they always call it weight transfer. It really isn't. If you watch a slow motion video of a drag car, you'll watch the tires that wrinkle up. Well, on a street car, we don't have the advantage of having a wrinkle wall. We have a radial. So what happens is, when you first take off, the rear end gets pushed down just a little bit. So what you do is you turn your rebound up for that. And that keeps the rear end from pushing down as much. Down as much. And then as it starts to come out of the hole, whether you're drag racing or the autocross, I'm sure you've seen back tires or even you've had a hop. Bop, 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 bop. And that, what's happening there is that this rear end now pops up like this. That's where you use the second knob that's on here with the C for compression. You start adding compression to it and that keeps that resistance from popping up. So now you're using both your rebound and your compression on the rear end. Rebound down, compression to keep it from popping up. So on the front of the car, you use rebound for your turns. Back of your car, you use rebound and compression for your acceleration. It's pretty simple. Those are two easy tips. Nobody else is telling you. You just saw it. Go adjust some shocks. See you guys at the track.